Let's give her a great big hand of applause. She comes right now. I want to let you guys know I met her at TBN, a very dynamic woman of God, and we're getting ready to go into the theology of the authority of the believer, the authority of the believer so that the enemy is not running roughshod over us, taking advantage of us, and we need to be able to war in the spirit. And so we, the atmosphere is already saturated. We have the Godmosphere at, at work here. And so we, we're grateful to God for the awesome woman of God who specializes in spiritual warfare and the authority of the believer. And she's going to bless us for the next 25 minutes or so. Okay? So would you uh, give her a great Next Dimension University uh, invite and appreciation. Amen? God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, I'm excited to share with you God's, God's message to the body of Christ. You know, we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And God wants his people to walk as overcomers. Yeah. And so I'm excited to share with you this message on spiritual warfare. You know, I'm an intercessor. And back in 2000, I was having prayer meetings in my home. And uh, we were praying for our country. The Lord tells us to pray for our leaders so that we live a peaceful life. Well, the Holy Spirit gave me a vision in July of 2000, and I saw the Statue of Liberty, and she was bent back at a slant. Then I saw her standing upright again, and I said, what does that mean? He said, pray for America, her freedom's in jeopardy. That was July of 2000. August, the following month, I saw the American flag blowing in the wind like a tornado went by. I said, what does that mean, Lord? He said, pray for America. She's going to go through severe trials. When we were attacked in 9-11, I knew God was warning me. I had no idea when I saw those two visions um, what was coming. And um, on, after 9-11, I started praying. I was devastated. We all were when we were attacked. And I said, Father, show me how to pray effectively for America at war. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. He inspired me at that moment to write a book. And he said, it's not going to be by your might nor by your power, but by, by my spirit. I said, okay, I'll do it. I'll do whatever you tell me. Well, you know, I wanted to offer words of comfort, hope, and God's promises. Because I've been a Christian for 39 years, and I have stood on the promises of God and watched him watch over his words to perform him in my life big time. And so as I was writing, I thought I was going to write promises. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But he wanted more than that. He woke me up and he said, you tell them the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God of pulling down strongholds. He says, you tell them that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of darkness. And, you know, I was dedicating this book, American Crisis. He gave me the title to our military. My heart went out to our troops that are out there fighting in, Af in Afghanistan. Well, anyway, during the time I was writing the book, I said, okay, Father, what do you want the introduction to be? What is your message to America? It's not important what I have to say. What's your message? And he said to me, 2 Chronicles 7.14. He says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And right after that, I said, okay. So the title, it was American Crisis. God has a message for America. That's what he wants. There is a condition. We need to humble ourselves. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. You know, we quote that. We've heard that scripture so many times since 9-11. But how many of us have gotten on our knees and humbled ourselves before God? That's what he's looking for us to do. Not just quote that scripture, but get on our knees and, and repent for our nation. Amen. Repent for our nation. And God will hear from heaven and forgive our sins. Well, then I said to him, okay, Lord, what do you want the preface to be? You know, again, it's not important what I have to say. What is your message? It was 5 o'clock in the morning, and I was just drained. I put the pin down, you know, my computer, and I went to sleep, 5 in the morning. When you ask, it should be given. When you seek, you will find. And where God guides, he provides. When he gives you the vision, he'll show you what he wants you to write. Well, he gave me a dream. And I'm going to share that dream with you because it was a powerful dream that has a lot of revelation. In the dream, I saw myself in a home. And there was a uh, door, like a doorway, but it was very small, like a five-year-old would go through. And I looked inside, peeked, and I saw a, a twin bed with a white bedspread on it. And I looked in there, and my thought was, somebody lives in there. Well, the Holy Spirit gave me the interpretation. He's, we are created in his image and his likeness. And he's created every one of us 
for, for where he could live and dwell within us, a place to dwell and live with every one of us. That's what that meant. Then I saw myself walking with my sister and my brother-in-law uh, in a neighborhood, and a little boy fell. And I was moved with compassion. I said, are you okay? And he said, yes. And I said, what is your name? He said, Elijah. When he said Elijah, I thought, oh, Elijah, like the prophet Elijah. And all of a sudden, I got carried in this wind, just straight, straight. This, this wind took me in my dream. I landed in front of a hospital, and there in front of the hospital waiting for me at the front door was my friend Barbara, who shared with me the gospel. She was the first one who ever shared with me the good news. And I said, Barbara, the Lord brought me here. I don't know why, but let's go in. We went in the hospital, and years ago, I used to work in the medical field. And I saw this nurse, and she was busy putting pillows in pillowcases, very occupied, not paying attention. She didn't recognize us coming in, so we just kept walking. But I saw another woman. Her name was Penny. And she recognized me, and her face lit up. It was beamed. Her eyes were open, and a big smile on her face. I said, Penny, maybe you're the reason why we're here. But in my dream, she vanishes. Then I saw one of the head nurses, and she looked troubled. And I said, Penny, I was talking to Penny, and then she just vanished. And the head nurse was, uh, you know, very just occupied and not really, but I knew something was troubling her. We proceeded into the lobby area when I saw two terrorists. And this is the message God wants to share me to share with you. There were two terrorists, and they were just shooting people at random, just shooting people. I stood up to the, those terrorists without no hesitation, no fear at all. I felt that anointing in my dream of the power and authority that we have in Jesus' name. I did not hide under the table like maybe I would have done, you know, in the flesh. But I stood up with authority. And I said, I rebuke you and bind you in the name of Jesus. And instantly they vanished in my dream. Then I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, and it sounded so audibly that I was frozen. I couldn't even move. And he said, I want my people to reign with power. And I go, oh, my gosh. I mean, you didn't waste time telling me what you wanted me to write. He wants us to reign with power. He's given us, Jesus came to the earth. He, he, um, Jesus came, went back to be with the Father. His work is finished. He came to give his life more abundantly. And he came to restore back the keys to the kingdom that Adam and Eve gave to the devil. He came to restore them back to us. And what he's saying is, he's saying, BJ, I'm going back to be with my father. And I've called you to be an ambassador for Christ here on the earth. I want you to rule and reign. And these keys are the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And they open and shut doors. And whatsoever things you bind on earth, I'll back you up. I'll bound in heaven. You have to initiate it. Whatsoever things you loose on earth, I, I, will loose, I will loose in heaven for you, and I will back you up. Here, my daughter, go. Be fruitful and advance my kingdom. Amen. So when he taught me that, and, you know, um, he wants us to reign with power. And um, anyway, recently, every year, I always say, Father, what's your plans for me? And uh, every year he tells me, gives me his orders. Because, you know, we're soldiers for Christ. Amen. We are soldiers for Christ. And um, 2 Timothy 2, 3, 4 says, Therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of, the, of this life, that he may please them who have chosen him to be a soldier. Well, he said, I'm doing a new thing. Because prior to that, and I still am, I have a military outreach. God has called me to share the good news and the gospel to support our troops, our men and women in uniform that are defending our freedom so we could be here today and, and worshiping the Lord. And um, anyway, I've had a lot of people say to me, Cynthia, I'm, I don't know how to pray with power and authority. A lot of Christians are saying that. And so the Lord gave me a vision. He said, I'm doing, he said, I'm doing a new thing. And I had a vision and I saw myself coming forward, going forward, with a soldier uniform, camouflage. And he said, I want you to train my, I want you to train a basic training on spiritual warfare. This is going to be a boot camp. And I've already done like five of them already. And God, God, you know, 
Satan's purpose, Jesus says, is kill, steal, and destroy. And aren't we witnessing that today? But you know what? Greater is he that lives in us than he that's in the world. We have all power to deploy the angels of the Lord, to loose them, to root out, pull down, and destroy the principalities of darkness. Well, you know, I, I asked the Lord. I said, Father, show me how to pray more effectively for America at war. And the Holy Spirit started waking me up and target praying. And I, he would say ambush. Our troops are in ambush. Stand for them. Then he said to me, guerrilla warfare. I would wake up my husband and say, what's a guerrilla warfare? Because he served in the army before I met him. And he shared with me. And I just took authority over the principalities of darkness who were coming you know, against our troops in, in, um, through guerrilla warfare. I prayed and interceded. And after I was done, I saw this. The Lord gave me a vision to show me the power of our prayers. And... And I saw this. How many of you seen Top Gun? You know, the, okay, Top Gun. Or you know that fighter jet? Well, this one was a white one that was going in the air. And I go, what does that mean? He said, Christians carry inside them. We're like those Top Gun warplanes. We carry inside of us prayers that when we release them are spiritual bombs that will dismantle the enemy in Jesus' name. All right, so. I remember saying, so he was teaching me how to pray. And he said, Jeremiah 110. So I went to Jeremiah 110 and, um, and I've read it before, but I didn't get the revelation. And I thought, Lord, I've, I've read this before. What are you trying to teach me here? Give me revelation, understanding of what you're trying to teach me. Jeremiah 110 says, I want you to root out. I want you to pull down. I want you to th destroy. I want you to throw down, build, and plant. I said, well, what does that mean? Next morning, the Holy Spirit wakes me up and he says, I want you to uproot and conquer. You're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And he said, Cynthia, if you get weeds and you pull them up from the top, they'll be back next week. But if you root them out and pull them down, they're, they're gone. Well, you know, I have a prayer team called... Um, Operation Defense, we're God's GIs, Global Intercessors. And uh, anyway, um, so I thought, you know what? Our troops are out there in Afghanistan. The, the uh, Taliban is growing all this poppy seed, and they're turning it into heroin, selling it, selling drugs. And then with that money, they buy arms and weapons against our troops. And I said, no more, devil, no more. I said, in the name of Jesus, we root out all that poppy seed. We pull it down, and we destroy it. And now we're going to replace it by building and planting good seeds. Father, Lord, put it in the hearts of our troops and our military to provide them good seeds so the Afghan people can earn an honest living eating healthy food. And listen to this. God heard our prayer on the news. I was watching our troops. They showed our troops. God allowed me to see our prayers being answered. I saw our troops rooting out all the poppy seed, rooting it out. And they even said the troops are rooting out the poppy seed. And I go, yes. And they said the military is providing seeds for the Afghan people to build and plant. Okay. Once we root out the evil, then we got to replace it with goodness, holiness, righteousness. Okay. Well, anyway, I was honored to support a general, major general that was over 30,000 in Afghanistan. And when he came back for his R&R, &R, I met with him and his wife for, for lunch. And um, anyway... He was telling me about the poppy seed and how they pulled it all out and everything. It was his men that were doing all that. I said, you know, sir, we were praying about that. And he goes, I know, I heard. So praise God, our, our prayers availeth much in Jesus' name. Now the Holy Spirit is giving me another. Um, he's saying to me, Cynthia, Esther generation. And I said, what do you mean, Lord? He said, I want you to raise up Esther's for such a time as this of my calling him to the kingdom. I want you to raise up intercessors that will stand and fast and pray for America's salvation and her survival. Just the way Queen Esther did, he wants us to for America. We have a lot of enemies against us right now. All right? And so we got we to gotta root out and pull down the principalities of darkness because we're not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against the principalities of darkness, rulers in high places. And so um, anyway, by praying for our enemies like Jesus instructs us to do, you know, a lot of, a lot of even I heard recently that some ISIS members had a, because we've been praying. These are my prayer partners right here. These are my prayer partners. 
And we know where two agrees in touching anything they ask here on earth, it shall be done by our Father who is in heaven. We loose the angels. We deploy the angels. We loose millions of angels. Jesus said, remember, the, you know, Jesus said the things he did we can do also and even greater in his name. All right. Well, you know what? I remember when he was teaching me on how to pray effectively, he also said, Cynthia, you're a gatekeeper. What you allow is allowed. What you forbid is forbidden. And he says, and I've given you an army of angels to, at your disposal. I go, oh, my gosh. I have an army of angels at my disposal? Okay. And, um, well, anyway, he's, do you remember the story where Jesus, uh, they came to arrest him, and one of his um, followers cut off the ear of one of the high priests? And then Jesus prayed for it to be restored back, and he did. And then Jesus said, don't you know that I could have called my, asked my father, and he would have sent a thousand angels, you know? So if he's saying that he can call on a thousand angels, we can call on a thousand angels to root out, pull down, totally dismantle the principalities of darkness. The Holy Spirit also said to me one day, he says, I want you to disarm the devil. I go, wow, okay, all right. Disarm Satan and his assignments in Jesus' name. Well, he's given us that power and authority. He said the things he did, we can do also, and greater in his name. Praise God. Well, he's raising up Esther's, and he really wanted me to talk about that. I'm raising up a prayer team right now, 24-7. You know, I hear a lot of things, and uh, right, right now, Russia, ISIS is a huge. He's, right now, the Lord wanted me to share with you how ISIS right now is beheading Christians. Are you aware of that? How many of you know that? How many of you know that Christians right now are being persecuted in the Middle East? And God wants us to stand for our, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to call up our congressmen, our senators, and say, what are you doing about the Christians that are being slaughtered? Well, you know, on July 3rd, the Lord gave me a vision, and he appeared to me in a vision. I saw Jesus, and I've seen him before. But, and, I, and I had the discernment. I knew something was wrong. I said, what's wrong, Lord? What's the matter? And he said, Allah, all in the name of Allah, he says, they are slaughtering and butchering his people and innocent Muslim people. And he said, I want you to pray. And so I called you up and we prayed for over an hour, taking authority, you know, and praying for our enemies, praying for those who despitefully use us. Pray that God will wake up ISIS, open their eyes, visit them in dreams and visions. It's happening. They are. And on 700 Club recently, um, Voice of Martyrs came on and they were saying how ISIS members are having dreams of the cross and visions of the Lord. We pray for them because we know that Satan is the one that's blinded them spiritually. We need to pray that God will open their eyes. And when their eyes are open, guess what? They're on our team. And they'll be advancing God's kingdom. Well, you know, the Holy Spirit, like I said, he shows me how to target pray. And... Um, do you remember back in Iraq, during the times when we were, well, we're, in, we're back in Iraq, but when we were in Iraq a few years ago, um, uh, Al Zarqawi, he's, he was a leader, and he was just as bad as Osama bin Laden. And uh, he was causing the Sunnis and the Shiites, it was like a civil war. Do you remember all that? And then I remember our troops were being caught in that fire, and I thought, no. So I was praying with a pastor and some of our, his friends from New York. And the Holy Spirit woke me up. He said, I want you to pray about Zarqawi. I said, the Lord said he wants us to root out Zarqawi and, um, and, and have, deliver him up to our military. Do you, and then the pastor said, yes, Lord, and, and deliver him up within a week. In five days, he was delivered up. Amen. Our prayers availeth much. Look at how many lives he would have destroyed, continued to destroy. Well, recently, we've been praying against ISIS, and I said, Father, we root out all their finances. We cut off their resources in the name of Jesus. We cut off the way of communicating through social media, through Twitter. I heard Twitter knocked them off, you know, praise God. And then, uh, so anyway, and then I heard Russia went in there to the UN and said, you know what, don't give them no more oil. You know, they're getting money from the oil. So that they cut off there. Well, we were praying <clears throat> and I, and the Holy Spirit inspired me to Pray about the leaders, because you know if they get the leaders and the sheep might just scatter. So I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we root out the leader, you know, uh, of ISIS, 
And Father, deliver him to our, to our military in Jesus' name. We cut off all his finances, resources. Do you know? And I, said, and I did what the pastors did. And I said, and Father, I want it done within a week. Decree and declare a thing, it shall be established in Jesus' name. And so do you know, that was on a Tuesday. That Friday, I heard it on the news. They got the number one ISIS leader, CEO over the finances. Over the finances. And they, they, um, he was also, the Holy Spirit said to me, black market. I go, Lord, what are you saying black market? And, and um, they said he was over the black mark. He was getting guns that way too. So the Lord was showing me he got him. He got him, praise God. So we need to have them weaken. We need to pray for their salvation. Um, but we need to pray and root out and pull down the principalities of darkness that are operating through them. And also Russia. Russia is a, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Russia is one of our number, I mean, they're, the Holy Spirit revealed to me Russia is one of our worst enemies. Because at least ISIS is telling us what they're up to. Okay, but Russia, they're, they're behind the scenes. And right now, they're in an arms race, the Holy Spirit said to me. They're in an arms race. And he said, dismantle their arsenal. We need to do that in Jesus' name. Praise God. So how many more minutes do I have? Is that it? Five more minutes. Okay. Well, I'm going to close right now. But all I want to say to you is that we all, I love your destiny here. I love, because that's where I'm at. You know, Jeremiah 21, 9, 29, 11, Living Bible says, my plans for you are good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. And when we serve God, well, you know, I'm fulfilling my destiny. I am fulfilling my destiny. And, you know, he, he said that to me one day. Because, you know, we serve, I'm serving our troops, the men and women that are fighting for our freedom. And, uh, and we're sending Bibles out to them. You know, we're sending uh, tracts to them with a message of salvation, the gospel. And we love them so much. We appreciate and honor the men and women who serve in our military. And so continue to pray for them too. And the one last thing I want to say is that um, the Holy Spirit said to me, and this is the good news. Great, you know, we read the back of the book. We win. All right? We win. But we still got to fight the good fight of faith. And we still need to occupy while, until he comes back for us. And uh, the one last thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to make an announcement. I do have some information for you back in the back over there. It's a basic, the Holy Spirit gave me a vision. And I saw, it was a lesson, and he said, basic training. He said, spiritual warfare prayer. And I said, okay. He told me to do that because I'm going out and speaking right now and having boot camps to equip the body of Christ. No more devil, enough is enough. You've taken territory that doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God's children. He's called us to rule and reign and be salt and light. Not the devil, in Jesus' name. One last thing he said to me, Cynthia, the Holy Spirit said, I want you um, to, to prophesy, invade America with my glory. So we need, you know, the Bible says in the end times, you know, he is going to um, pour out his spirit upon all flesh, all the nations. And boy, when they fill it, they're repenting with nobody even having to tell them to because he's a holy God. But God is on the throne. And sometimes we see what's going on in the world. He said to me, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And he said, and be still and know that I'm God. Praise God. So we, um, if anyone wants to join our prayer team, uh, I can let you know what's going on. You, we're going to start having conference calls where we all plug in and we're all praying. The Holy Spirit reveals to me what to pray about and to target. Back in the back, the Lord inspired me to come out with this, um, this prayer. It's a prayer covering for America. And it's all scripture-based. And also back in the back, I have a lesson. She's passing out right now. It's a lesson on basic training and spiritual warfare. You're soldiers for Christ. And use the keys of the kingdom. And don't allow the enemy to rob you from fulfilling your destiny, he said in the book of Hebrews. And this is the last thing I'm going to read to you. Because yesterday when I was finishing my message, the Holy Spirit said to me, Hebrews. And I said, okay, Lord. And um, let me just close with this. Okay. 
Hebrews 12, 1, 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and fate in our minds. So don't allow the enemy to stop you from fulfilling your, uh, your destiny. Greater is he that lives in you, and he who, call, he who called you is going to finish it victoriously. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's really appreciate our guest speaker today and what she brought and what she added to our school. Amen. I believe it's very strategic, uh, our connection there.